So I want to say just a little bit more about lateral gene transfer. Uh, the first really important indicators that it happened came from looking at the exchange of genes um, going from uh, bacteria that became resistant to antibiotics into new strains of bacteria. And those were transmitted uh, by plasmids, uh, which are uh, little spheres within um, cells that can contain DNA material. Uh, it also turns out that viruses can also transfer genetic material uh, between organisms. So we often think of it as happening um, uh, within uh, bacteria, for example, with that antibacterial resistance. But I found this really interesting tree, again, sort of with a common ancestor at the bottom here and the branch points, that was looking at how plants were able to colonize land. And this paper looked at all of the different genes that were critical to being able to grow roots on land. And it um, uh, looked at the individual relatedness of those genes in different organisms. So it's like making a phylogenetic tree, except for instead of using the whole organism, it's just based on the genes. And each one of these arrows represents a gene that they identified where it came from, in this case, a bacteria, and the, the relative timing of when that was transferred into an ancestor of uh, the land plants. So this first one included um, the ability to uh, make um, uh, plastids and ferment um, alcohol. Uh, the, well, the first two. Here. All right. And then the red algae diverged from the ancestors of the green algae, mosses, and land plants. Then the green algae diverged. And then there were a series of transfers uh, one from fungi and two from bacteria that allowed um, the ancestors. Of, of land plants to develop their vascular structure um, and a bunch of other things, including lateral root formation, um, the patterns on the leaves. And so these genes didn't actually create the vascular development because fungi and bacteria don't have those same properties, but those genes were transferred into the ancestors of land plants and they gained these new functions. And the genes continued to evolve uh, with mutations. And as they increased the function for the organism, they were selected for in the, in the populations. Right. And then further up within um, the uh, land plants, there were more gene transfers uh, from the fungi, even one from the archaea, and one from the bacteria that um, influenced uh, gene DNA re replication and repair and uh, resistance to um, uh, pathogens. And so if you think back to our interactions among organisms, this pathogen resistance uh, is, is one of those things to try to limit uh, the parasitism or, or disease of, of the negative impacts of the interactions between, between those organisms. Okay. So this is just one example of how lateral gene transfer from one type of organism to another type changes the function of, of the recipient organism. And the, this paper argues that we couldn't actually have land plants without the contributions of genes from the fungi, archaea, and, and bacteria. So these examples of lateral gene transfer show that, that how much life is interconnected with each other. And while most genes are inherited 
of through cell division um, and through uh, sort of a, a lineal descent uh, from the uh, parent to uh, the offspring cells, it's the transfer of genes among different organisms has been really critical in the evolution of life on Earth. Thanks for watching.